My task is to relay to you information about the change in the science standards. To capture the essence of the new science standards, it may require some change on your part. Don't fear the change. Embrace it. If I were to choose a quote that embraces the new science standards, it would be this that's on the screen now. That science is not just a steps, of proce steps and procedures. Students should engage in science to make sense in their world. And you know, just about all of us would agree that student engagement is very important in science. Don't just tell the students about science. Let them engage themselves in gathering, reasoning, drawing conclusions. That's what science is. I think I will go to a different slide here. I'll try again, going to a different slide. Oh, <laughs> went to the wrong slide. Uh, you're very familiar, I'm sure, with the georgiastandards.org website. At the beginning of the year, however, the new standards had been taken off the georgiastandards.org website. I don't think they wanted people to get confused as to what was the new, what was the old. So they have them on now. Uh, you can see with the arrow, the Georgia Standards of Excellence are the new standards. The standards that we're wrapping up this year are the GPS right here. So they are on georgiastandards.org. Uh, as you probably are familiar, there are only marginal changes in the content overall of what the standards are. If you were teaching the water cycle in the GPS, you're probably still teaching the water cycle under the GSE, and that's the tr that's the case for almost every every bit of content. But don't let that fact give you a false sense of security into thinking that the same content should be taught the same way. We're looking to have more student engagement than is listed in the GPS. Uh, the student outcomes from the GPS and the Georgia Standards of Excellence are simply different, and that's one thing I want to elucidate in this particular video. Uh, and it probably is a good time to remind you that change is good, uh, and you may have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit if you see that what's in the new standards is something where you need to change the procedures in your classroom. You can do it, though. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the old standards, GPS. I just got a sampling of some GPS standards. These are GPS standards that were from, uh, I think this is ninth grade physical science. And you can see I've underlined the verbs uh, going down here. Explain, relate, investigate, compare, contrast. Uh, some of these verbs kind of lack engagement. It is good to be able to relate. It is good to be able to recognize. But you can, you'll be able to see with the GPS Georgia Standards of Excellence, that you don't have that many verbs that really are uh, passive. Uh, just recognizing something doesn't necessarily mean this teacher was in having them being engaged. They may have been, but they may not have been just because this is what the verb is. The student outcome are these verbs. So the student outcome for the GPS is going to be a little bit, um, my bad, for the Georgia Standards of Excellence is going to be a little bit different. So let me show you what some of those are. And they come from the science and engineering practices. I think the sum total of these practices promote engagement and higher order thinking better than the sum total of what the old standard verbs were. I've underlined some aspects that you didn't find as much in the old standards. Uh, you can see down here communicating information. Yes, it will be in the standards for students to be able to communicate what they have learned, uh, engaging in arguments based upon evidence. That's something that's a, a probably a little bit lacking in the GPS. Designing solutions, you know, that's kind of an engineering practice right there. Using math, now that's what's not going to be in all standards. You'll be able to see if it happens to be in yours or not. Even up here in using models, that's something that is uh, kind of a running theme throughout here. Let me show you uh, where they, how it looks like with these physical science standards. Okay, these are some of the new physical science standards, and as you can see, every standard or substandard here directly relates to these science and engineering practices. 
uh, using mathematics and computational thinking, uh, obtain, evaluate, and communicate, analyze and interpret data, ask questions, develop models. You can see it lines up just almost perfectly, and that's going to be the case in many, many of the new standards. It's going to be the science and engineering practices. So whenever you are looking in your classroom, the student outcomes in most cases will be these eight things depending on what happens to be in your particular standards. If an administrator comes into your classroom, what should they see? They should see, for the most part, either students doing these eight things or preparing to do these eight things. It kind of, uh, kind of simplifies it in a way. And that's going to be true pretty much from kindergarten all the way through to chemistry. Uh, let's take a look at the seventh grade standards. You can see that all of these happen to relate to it. All the major standards, by the way, not the substandards, but all the big standards do use this obtaining, evaluating, and communicating of the science and engineering practices. Let's go on to even in second grade standards, kind of a much lower grade level than you find with high school and with middle school. Uh, almost every one of these comes straight from the science and engineering practices and the one that is not design a device you know that's probably pretty similar to developing using models so anyone that is not you might find would be kind of have the spirit of most of these anyway so uh, that's a little bit about what you should expect to see whenever you are using these new standards. And what I think would be the best thing to do, what I would recommend now, is to get in the mindset of being able to do these things that are on these science and engineering practices. Get in the mindset of having them attack, obtain, evaluate, and communicate the mindset of engaging in evidence-based arguments and so on. And I think that will be what will be the biggest change. If you were just having students explain and list and all those verbs that are on the GPS standards, that's just a different outcome than you have with the new standards. So hopefully you'll be able to see as you're getting in this new mindset you'll be able to see how you can, uh, well, get into these kinds of practices. And, you know, I just have a feeling that many of you as science teachers probably did carry it farther than just listing and just explaining but uh, and, and already used some of these. But this is what your administrator should be able to see when they walk into your classroom as you are using the new standards. Now, I do have a couple of resources up here, uh, teachingchannel.org has a couple of videos on the new standards. Uh, they are this one, NGSS Science and Engineering Practices is the name of one video, and NGSS A Vision for K-12 through Science Education is another video. I'm going to come out with another video or two to uh, kind of get, hopefully prepare you to get in the mindset of going with the new science and engineering practices that are in your new standards. Hey, I hope you have a very good day and get a lot done. Thank you.